I'm Davey. And I'm awesome. And welcome to Davey's Awesome Wrestling, where I review wrestling-related things all from the perspective of a fan, not an insider. This week was the Ring of Honor pay-per-view, Death Before Dishonor. The second pay-per-view they've had since being bought out by AEW. Let's get into it. The opening match, which I'm going to say I was really shocked that they would open with this, but was for the Ring of Honor World Championship, challenger Claudio Castagnoli versus champion Jonathan Gresham. The match itself was fantastic, of course. I mean, Claudio Castagnoli, Jonathan Gresham, couldn't go wrong there. And it was cool that Claudio brought out all the big moves. The one that really turned the tide, though, was the big swing. He seemed to be in control ever since that move. And then, after his Ricola bomb, Claudio Castagnoli got the pin and the win, and for the first time ever, became a world champion as he is the new Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion. So like I said, great match. My only problem is... There wasn't all that much build up to this. There was only a couple of weeks build up for the World Championship. And also it was the opener. I know I'm old school, but the world title match should, in my opinion, go on last. That should be the main event. But whatever. And we also gotta figure with all the, you know, rumors getting out there about Jonathan Gresham being unhappy with his direction in ROH that they were just going to give the title to Castagnoli anyway. As we have found, those rumors have turned out to be very true. He's on Twitter saying he doesn't want to wrestle at all anymore. I don't want to get much into that, but I am happy for Castagnoli finally being a world champion and would easily give this one a 4 out of 5. Yeah! Second match was for the Ring of Honor 6-man tag team championships. Dalton Castle and the boys versus the Righteous. Vincent, Bateman, and Dutch with Vita Von Starr. And apparently the boys now actually have names. Brandon and Brent. Good for you guys. The match was good, but again, there was no build-up to this one. Not even a couple of weeks. This was like announced on the last Dynamite or Rampage. But no build-up in the sense of any rivalry, any challenge on AEW, nothing. Especially because Vincent, the leader of the Righteous, is signed to Impact Wrestling right now. Bateman is signed to New Japan Pro Wrestling, and Dutch is just kind of floundering on the independence. So based on that, and the fact that we kind of know that Dalton Castle is signed to Ring of Honor, we kind of knew who was going to win. And we were right. After his bangerang finisher, Dalton Castle got the pin, the win, and we crowned new six-man tag team champions. Also got to say, they haven't really discussed or even shown the six-man tag team championships since buying out Ring of Honor. So I was kind of hoping that they were just going to like, let it go away, because I've really never gotten it, that into those championships. Like I've said before, I'm not big on the six-man tag team titles. But, can't take away from the fact that it was a pretty good match, so I'll give it a three out of five. Yeah! Then a match that finally did actually have some build-up. For the Ring of Honor Pure Championship, Daniel Garcia challenged Wheeler Yuta. It's a sad build-up because of the fact that there's been this big rivalry between the Jericho Appreciation Society, and the Blackpool Combat Club. And before the match, in a backstage interview, Daniel Garcia talked about how he doesn't even really want the Pure Championship title. He doesn't care about pure wrestling. He's a sports entertainer, not a wrestler. He only wants it to take it away from Yuta and destroy it. So that added some drama. To add even more drama, Daniel Garcia, in a nice touch to kind of dig at the Blackpool Combat Club, particularly their coach, William Regal, he came out in gear that looked very similar to Regal's old gear when he was Lord Steven Regal. The maroon trunks and everything. Obviously a dig at William Regal. Another dig was when he put Wheeler Yuta in a Regal stretch. But in a little tick for tat, Wheeler Yuta put Daniel Garcia in a lion tamer. This match went on for just under 16 minutes because, as you know, they timed the pure championship matches. And it was at that point, after a crazy amount of submission holds between both Wheeler Yuta and Daniel Garcia, Wheeler Yuta got an insane roll-up on Daniel Garcia and the pin, retaining his Ring of Honor Pure Championship. This match easily got a 4 out of 5. Yeah! Then another match that was thrown on at the last minute. Brother versus Brother, Roosh versus Dragon Lee. Roosh, former Ring of Honor World Champion. Dragon Lee, former Ring of Honor World TV Champion. It was good, but it was also made clear that this wasn't a rivalry. This was just two brothers going out to have a good match. And they did. But again, it's kind of hard to get into a match when there really was no build-up or story. However, a story was started in this match, so I will give him points for that. When towards the end of the match, Dragon Lee was distracted because he thought that his brother Roosh was hurt, and it turned out that Roosh was faking so that he could get an advantage over his little brother, and ended up hitting him with a second bull's horns and got the pin. 
So for that reason alone, that they actually look like they might be starting a rivalry between these two, I'm going to give this one a four out of five. Yay! Then for the Ring of Honor World Women's Championship, Serena Deeb challenged Mercedes Martinez. Again, another match that they actually did take some time to build up a little bit. As these two were tagging together and Serena Deeb kind of let it be known that it was just to study her opponent and get a championship match. And let me tell you, it was brutal. I mean, two submission masters in the ring. Not to mention you could feel the desperation from Serena Deeb. And at some point, so could Mercedes Martinez when Deeb bit her. But despite her desperation, it didn't really work as Mercedes Martinez got the submission and retained her Ring of Honor Women's World Championship. Now, I do have one problem with this. I kind of wanted Serena Deeb to win because it seems to me that they keep throwing Serena Deeb into these matches just to be a really good opponent for the top women. And I get that. She is that good to where we always believe it. She's always credible. But when you keep making them lose, that kind of hurts their credibility. I think at this point, since she's shown how good she is, whether it's the AEW Women's World Championship, the TBS Championship, or the Ring of Honor Women's Championship, it is time to give Serena Deeb a title. Or we're going to stop buying her as a credible contender. We're going to start looking at her as a choke artist. And I don't want that. She's too good for that. So please, let this be the last time she loses a title match. But, for right now, this match, another 4 out of 5. Yay! And then the match has had the most build-up out of any match on the card. Which is honestly why, in my opinion, if they weren't going to put the world title as the main event, this should have been. But whatever. For the Ring of Honor World TV Championship, Jay Lethal challenged Samoa Joe. Like I said, they've been building this one up for months, ever since Joe came back and won the Ring of Honor Television Championship from Minoru Suzuki. And also, of course, there's the drama in there of Jay Lethal's history with that championship. Not only a former Ring of Honor Television Champion, but the longest reigning Ring of Honor Television Champion of all time. And even at one point held both the Television and World Championship at the same time. And then on the flip side, we had Samoa Joe, who was the longest reigning Ring of Honor World Champion. This match, though, got started before the entrances were even over. As Joe came out, the fighting ensued. Didn't even get to the ring. They fought for a while outside the ring, and before the match was officially started, though, Satnam Singh hurt Joe's shoulder, adding to the drama. But still, this match was great with great reversals. There were so many of those OMG reversals in there, like Jay Lethal getting out of a muscle buster and then doing the lethal injection, which Joe kicked out of. Lethal going for another lethal injection and it getting countered into a coquina clutch, which he got out of. But a second coquina clutch was enough to put him out and get Joe the win, retaining his Ring of Honor World TV Championship. Like I said, the story that was told before and during this match were amazing, not to mention the wrestling itself was awesome. It's Samoa Joe. It's Jay Lethal. Two of the greatest. These two couldn't have had a bad match if they had tried. I was on the edge of my seat, so I will give this one a 5 out of 5. Yeah! And then the main event for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships. The Briscoes versus FTR, two. Two out of three falls stipulation. Now I get why this was the main event, because the last time these two mixed it up, it was crazy, insane, awesome. And the tides have now turned because the last time they fought, the Briscoes were the champions, and FTR won the titles off of them. This time, it's reversed. However, I don't want to say it didn't have enough build-up, because it's been built up since their first match, which was being built up since Ring of Honor went on hiatus. But... But it was only announced for a couple of weeks. However, can't take away from this match because whereas the first match was awesome, this match was actually better. I mean, first of all, there's always the great drama of a two out of three falls match. The first fall went to the Briscoes after they got a doomsday device on FTR. But of course, the second fall went to FTR after they got the big rig. And before the third fall went to the Briscoes, where it looked like they were going to do the combination of the J-Driller and Froggy Bow, Cash Wheeler was able to climb the rope and from the outside put Mark Briscoe through the announce table. And then the move that actually ended it, when Dax Harwood hit Jay Briscoe with a middle rope pile driver. Like a pile driver is bad enough, but from the mid rope, oh my God. And that got FTR the win and the retain of their tag team championships after somewhere around the 50 minute mark. This match was crazy. It was awesome. It was fantastic. Like I said, I honestly think this match was better than their previous match. Which is saying a lot, because that match was a 5-star match. And so is this one. A 5 out of 5. Yeah! So Ring of Honor's 
Death Before Dishonor 2022 overall was a good pay-per-view as far as the action goes. As far as the stories, very, very lacking. I get the rumors right now are that Tony Khan is working on getting them back onto a weekly television show. However, what's not clear about the rumors, because that's all we got right now, is that they basically want this to be like a second brand, kind of like AEW being their Raw and this being their SmackDown. And I think that's unrealistic. Ring of Honor is a niche product. Extremely niche product. The people who love that pure athletic style love Ring of Honor. The people who just more like the story hate Ring of Honor. So I really feel like if you're going to do something like that, then this is going to be your NXT, whereas Dynamite and Rampage are going to be your Raw and SmackDown. However, I hope it happens soon because the truth is we need to stop seeing the Ring of Honor people on Dynamite and Rampage. Right now, that is one issue I do have with AEW. As much as I love their titles, it's oversaturated with titles right now. But then also that, like they had a pay-per-view for Ring of Honor that they announced over a month ago, but really only spent the last few weeks doing any kind of build-up, and not even real build-up. Two of the matches on this were announced less than a week before the event. Two of the other matches were announced about two weeks ago. There was only one match that had been announced from the start about a month ago. The rest of them all seem to be thrown in at the last minute. And that kind of hurts because, again, we need a story to get our attention. It's hard to really get that invested in it when there is no story. Now, I will give them credit for the Dragon Lee Roosh match, whereas the story came within the match. But the six-man tag team championships felt like just a filler match. At first, the Dragon Lee Roosh match felt like a filler match. Even some of the other title matches felt like they just had to get something in there. Even the Ring of Honor World Championship match. It wasn't announced that long ago. There hasn't been a rivalry between Jonathan Gresham and Claudio Castagnoli. So it just kind of felt like they just had to do something for the Ring of Honor World Championship. And again, that kind of stuff just bothers me a little bit. But can't take away from the action that was displayed in this pay-per-view. And can't take away from the stories that were told in the ring in this pay-per-view. So based on that, I will still give Ring of Honor Death Before Dishonor 2022 a solid 4 out of 5. So there you have it. That's my wrestling review this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit like. Hit subscribe. Hit that little bell so you get notifications for when I post new videos. And leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of Ring of Honor, Death Before Dishonor, 2022. Love you guys.